I know that one of the the strategic sectors that Israel has started to pursue is water technology. And I, I shouldn't even say started to pursue because you've been well established um, as kind of a leader in that sector. And I know that uh, I've interviewed the, the head of um, the, uh, the authority there that's in charge of that. And uh, th that's obviously something that, that Georgia can, can learn from. Well, we, we uh, in a way, we're very, we're very glad in the last year to be able to be, in a way, uh, on the giving side here in, mm -hmm. in this formula. A lot of times we are fortunate to, uh, to get American support in Israel mm -hmm. and American uh, aid and help. Mm -hmm. And in this issue, it's one of several issues that we're now active in Israel in a way is on the giving side. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's water sources, clean energy, and homeland security. These are three clusters that we're very active in. Mm. And in most of the time, you're talking about bringing here Israeli know-how. Uh, in terms of uh, the water, uh, the drought that the state passed uh, in the last couple of years is something of a normal uh, uh, daily issue in Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in a quite dry uh, climate. We had to understand, even this before the state was uh, established, mm -hmm. that you have to be very sophisticated and diverse in managing and creating water sources. And so in Israel, we have used everything. We have uh, big companies uh, very strong on desalinization. We, we have uh, an entire city in the south of Israel, city of Elat, uh, lives on a desalinization plant from the Red Sea. We're building now another five of them along the Mediterranean. Uh, we also have major construction projects. The national uh, water carrier we built from um, uh, the Sea of uh, the Galilee in Tiberias in the north that uh, goes all the way to the Negev Desert in the south mm -hmm. and bring water for agriculture and uh, uh, we also experimented in Israel with uh, using uh, even uh, brackish salty water and now in the Negev we are actually planting forests in almost desert areas using this kind of water. Mm -hmm. In some cases we use it for uh, growing um, fish farms and even producing sweet watermelons, which is something sort of a miracle to come to the middle of the desert and to be able to, s to taste the sweetest watermelons that grow on salty water. Mm. That's interesting, especially um, as it pertains to your exports. I think they've export you've exported over $2 billion or something like that in water technology in the, in the past 10 or 12 years or something. Israel has been very active in the last decade because water like energy is becoming the problem of, of the 21st mm -hmm. century. Uh, yeah. you, if you look at the globe, you see uh, either places that have too much water or places that doesn't have water. Mm -hmm. So uh, the news is always uh, about either floods or drought. Uh, yeah. I think that's why we in Israel understood uh, early on that we have here an opportunity to share our know-how with the rest of the world community. And there's actually now a national authority in Israel uh, that works on uh, clean energy and water um, uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. And uh, Israeli companies right now, as we speak, are building desalinization plants in places like Hawaii mm -hmm. uh, and the West Coast as well. Uh, they are involved in, one of, in some of the biggest water projects around the world. And I hope uh, that we will see some of this here in Georgia. Uh, last year, with the help of the Israeli Chambers of Commerce here in Atlanta, we uh, brought 14 Israeli companies uh, that uh, came uh, and shared their uh, know-how mm -hmm. uh, and communicated with water authorities in the states. Mm -hmm. and, and this is not an issue that's going to be away from the table, even if you have sometimes you know, a good season. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the global warming is making it uh, that we have to have a solid long-term strategy of running our water sources. And in this, we can uh, really bring a lot of Israeli technology.